When you first start playing in a brand new Minecraft world, do you ever stop and look around over the limitless horizon of millions of blocks full of unknown adventure and mystery and ever think to yourself, well, this is all trash. Who needs all these millions of blocks when you can have one block? Yeah, me too. So for these next 100 days, I'll be playing in one block skyblock. For those of you who don't already know what one block is, it's Minecraft, but with one block. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You're all caught up. Okay, well, there is a little bit more, I guess. Like how when you first spawn in, you're greeted with the text, break the block below. And I don't have too much to live for, so I guess I'm going to blindly obey. But sadly, we don't fall to our doom. Because just like the next text tells us, the block will actually regenerate. Which, you could have told us that before we thought we were going to fall to our death. Kind of messed up, but okay. And yes, the block will get better than just dirt. In fact, every 1,000 blocks is a new phase, which brings in a whole bunch of new blocks that spawn as the one block. And some of those blocks are chess. So, yeah, now you, you really are 100% filled in. So for the first thing I do, I add some dirt to the one block. I know, pretty amazing. Mind-blowing stuff going on here. We plant our sapling, then we get right back to abusing this poor block. We then get another sapling, which I think is pretty good luck. This is honestly my first time playing one block, so I'm not really sure. But in every other one block video, it seems like it takes a really long time for them to get their second sapling. I make a small platform around the block, and then I make myself an axe, because punching trees with my bare hands is driving me to drinking. Then I use some slabs to place another sapling far enough away from the first one so it will grow. Saplings hate each other, more than Will Smith and Chris Rock. Uh, is that still even funny? Or are we all really, really done with those memes now? Soon, I'm joined by my first companion, a little pig. And I rush right in and give her a kiss right on the mouth. Clearly, I'm going insane from the extended loneliness on this isolated sky island. But Patricia says I'm an excellent kisser, and she won't jump to her death to get away from me just yet. However, she does inform me that we should probably just be friends for now. So I make some extra room on the platform so she can have her space. Then we get this juicy mommy milker. Yummy. Add to the platform because now it's getting really crowded. And finally, end the night by introducing Stefan to his new home. Yes, Stefan, we all hate it here too. Just before day two starts, Patricia's ex-boyfriend shows up and tries to win her back. I do a quick little check around, make sure PETA isn't looking, and then I spank him right in the butt. You deserve better, Patricia. I could have made you so happy. Speaking of happy, look at this beautiful barnyard family. It's like a scene out of a Snow White movie. Hey, check it out. I'm Jesus. Aww. And I'm not the only righteous thing happening this morning, because our first benevolent gift gives us a carrot and a water bucket. And, okay, I'm actually not so proud of this one. I make a hole next to the one block, because I'm trying to mission impossible my way underneath the platform. I'm trying to place a block under the one block so that sand and gravel won't fall. And it works, but... R.I.P. Stefan. Father help! Your loss feels unbarable. <laughs> But come on, we can't lament over that anymore. Oof, I don't, I don't know which of those puns is worse. Still, the saddest part of today is that we planted a birch tree. Yeah, we are that desperate. Then we break the gift, and it starts our second phase, the underground. And yes, that means that I managed to lose an animal in the first phase, but mm, let's not talk about that. The underground is our first mining phase. It has stone, coal, and some iron, it's basically what you would find in your very first mining trip in vanilla. I decide that we have enough wood slabs and I start to make our first real permanent platform. We're still gonna need some more wood though. And just like when Alexa listens to your conversation without you knowing, this tree must have overheard me because it pops right up. We also add a few slabs around the trees to catch any saplings that fall. And then we throw down a furnace. And I know that I don't really have a reliable way of collecting coal. So since wood is our only real renewable resource, I'm going to be using it for building and burning. Then we add some more saplings, and we replace the ones that we've harvested. Because recycle, reduce, replant, you know, whatever they said in school to try to shelter us from the fact that we are slowly killing our own planet. Ooh, okay, that got dark really quickly. How about we take our minds off of that with some happy little farming? 
I'm continuing on the farming platform and I'm building up to add our Sky Island a little more height. Just like my booty, it's always nice to add a little more dimension for the looks. We do another Mission Impossible so we can place down this block where we'll place the water on top of this and then we'll have a decent little sky farm. To be a little bit different, we add some birch and yeah, I know, ew, but hey, there it is. Yeah, in fact, it's so ew, uh, I think I'm actually going to cover it up with oak slabs. Ah, birch, it's great as long as you can't see it. And there's the sky farm. It's like a farm, but in the sky. I'm really good with slogans today. We add one carrot, and then we add some melons over on the sides. Ugh. Putting melons in the same farm as carrots and using birch wood in my build? What have I become? Day three, and we get a mushroom. Now we can suck off this cow's shrooms for infinite stew. Hooray. Nice. But it's not all shroom titties and good times, because soon we get our first mob, a zombie. I actually crafted a sword for this, but I didn't really use it. I guess I was role-playing as Thor for a minute here. We use some of our iron to get shears, and don't worry, it's not for the mushroom. I would never clip those nips. It's so we can farm leaves from our trees. This will be our second renewable building block. We spend the rest of the day expanding the central platform, and by that night, it looks pretty... pretty boring. Uh, yeah. It's, it's just oak planks in a big square. This isn't exactly a build battle winner right here, guys. But hey, we can spice things up by adding some leaves around the perimeter. Am I sexy now? By the way, whenever I hear the phrase, spice things up, my brain never goes to a good place. <laughs> That's never a good saying. Uh, just me? Okay, fair. Moving on. Speaking of spice things up, this creeper does try to blow me, but I use my sword and I let him know that we should just be friends. All jokes aside, all these mobs are getting a bit too dangerous and I, I decide I want to make a cage around the one block. I kind of expected that worse mobs were coming in. Yeah, I was very right. I experiment with a cage that's tough, it's made out of stone, but I still want to find some way that I'll be able to mine the one block and keep the mobs in while I can still go in the cage. I really tried not to look up a tutorial for anything here. Since this is my first playthrough, I didn't want to ruin the fun. Also, I, I admit, I I forgot looking up a tutorial was an option. And okay, sometimes I'm dumb. I decide I want to use a wooden gate, and soon we get our first real test of this new cage. This zombie is 100% stuck and no threat at all. Like an honorable gentleman opponent, I show my faux mercy by farting in his mouth. But just like the thirst traps on my TikTok feed, shaking my butt in their face gets me a little more attention than I was hoping for. Point is, the cage works and we're adding some more slabs to the roof. So to sum up our build so far, we have a cobblestone hut, oak plank square, and the worst farm I've ever seen. Ah, truly my masterpiece. We do some yard work and I finish the night off by getting back to the one block. We then get a chest, and we get some spruce. Oh, could it be? We have a tree that doesn't actually burn my eyes? I also decide I, I wanted to add this like slab ramp up to the side of my farm. There's just something about like the one block being right in the middle of the bottleneck of the only path. I just didn't like that. And with this cage, that didn't really turn out to be such a big deal. I was kind of worried for nothing, but I still think the ramp looks pretty good, so it's fine. I mean, at this point, anything is a welcome addition. As we finish up the ramp on the left side of the farm as well, the sun starts to rise on day five, even though you can barely tell in all this rain. Not that I'm complaining though, this rain looks sick. I also just love how these shaders look when they're wet. And you know me, I do like them juicy. Whoop, speaking of juicy, we are presented with another fungus chungus. We carefully push this one out into the rain because nothing smells better than wet livestock and soggy portobellos. <laughs> Spider, more like spy died, more like die dirt. Cause it, I'll see myself out. Okay, if you made it through that joke, you deserve a bit of happiness in your life. And here it is, spruce. We start to harvest this wood right away, and I'm so excited for more spruce trees. And I even start to pull up some of the oak saplings and replace them with as many spruce ones as I can. We then add some more spruce leaves 
around the ramps, and it's looking nice. Don't get me wrong, the real reason we're doing this is so my dumb face won't go running off the edge. We also get another creeper, and this one is no problem, because the cage is working perfectly. But it would still suck if the creeper blew up. But not as much as I suck on those mushrooms. Oh, what's this? Um, I've just been handed a note from YouTube. They want me to stop talking about the mushrooms in it. Honestly, guys, that's just kink shaming. So our next benevolent gift is actually a pretty big deal, because it gives us two blocks of ice. So we can make this spruce well. And yeah, we can just punch the ice and make an infinite water source. Nice. And the second cool thing about this gift is that it signals that we're now headed to the ice plains phase. More on that later. Whenever I say more on that later, I sound like I'm about to start reading an ad. Okay, anyway, uh, I'm adding a slab stairway, uh, but this time I'm actually going down. Building down is kind of tricky in Skyblock because you need to use water to sort of fall off the platform and build under it, but it is totally worth it. You want to have some dimension in your build. Having a big flat platform is, that's for a crappy YouTuber, somebody with less than a million subs. Wait, how many subs do I have? Oh, <clears throat> still moving on. We start another platform down on this lower level. So far, it just looks like a big oak UFO, kind of looking like we've got caveman aliens now. But it turns out I'm the real Neanderthal because I forgot to put down torches and soon we have creepers on the new platform. They come at me at the same time and I try to juggle them, but not so great. Which means now we have a huge chunk of our platform blown out and uh, I'll admit, I kind of deserve that one. So no duh, uh, the first thing I do is add torches then I quickly repair our shame hole. That's the hole in the base that I'm ashamed of. Not my, <clears throat> anyway, never mind. But hey, while we're talking about plugging up bottom holes, I plug up the gap in the middle of the platform with some stone and some clay. I'm going to be making a little pond back here, but I don't really have anything to decorate it yet, so yeah, it's just going to stay pretty ugly for now. Kind of like my bottom hole. I then finish this off by placing a ton of leaves around the bottom platform. Great, now I made it weird to say bottom. And yeah, while this does look pretty nice, again, all of this is pretty much just so I don't fall off. We throw down a bed, and we finally advance to the next phase. It also stops raining, and it turns out to be a wonderful day here in the winter wonderland. We get some fluffy white snow, and this little ball of white, Cluck Jr. And just a few blocks later, we find this apex predator, a bloodthirsty wolf who could rip our throats out in a second without even breaking a sweat. And look now, it's just a dumb little puppy. And we get the achievement best friends, which is kind of messed up if you think about it. I mean, all these other animals have been way more loyal, but okay. And unfortunately, it only gets more messed up. This is actually really kind of tragic. I don't have any berries or leads to catch this fox, but if I let him run free, he'll kill little Cluck Jr. So that does kind of break my heart. But hey, just like any other bad parent who can't help their child cope with death, the one block gives me a bunny and tells me to shut up. But just in case that wasn't enough fluff, next we get a polar bear. The polar bear doesn't hurt you or any of your animals, so it's going to be totally okay to let it join us here on the sky block. But a quick PSA, polar bears IRL are not so nice. Please do not attempt this at home. Another fox means another tear from the captain. And the words of Thanos, forgive me little one. After that, I decide to cry myself to sleep. But hey, at least I see my loyal little pupper has come to comfort me in my time of you know, he just farted in his sleep. Ooh, I can taste it. We wake up on day seven, and I see all these spruce trees, and I really am getting in the Christmas spirit. Speaking of awesome trees, we get four dark oak saplings and ugh, some rabbit hides. Man, one block can be morbid sometimes. I don't have too much room for these huge trees, so I plant them down on my bed platform. Okay, so I'm actually going to just let the footage roll here for a few seconds, like no edits or anything. Just watch this. I plant the trees, and I just do like, whatever, walking around, I do some dirt stuff. For only like, a few seconds. And then we like, barely walk up these stairs, and hocus pocus, we get dark ocus, I guess. I mean, that grew in like 10 seconds, and I'm just fine with that, because dark oak is my favorite wood. And if you disagree, you're wrong, and that's okay, but just do better next time. I start to use the dark oak immediately on my next project, and uh, that's it. My next project is just four uneven logs. 
art. No, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'll work on this later. But once again, this dummy forgot to place torches, so we do get another creeper that spawns over here. This time, though, I uh, decided it might be cool to actually, you know, use my brain. So I make myself a bow, and I make some arrows, and I kill the creeper. And if you listen very carefully, as he dies, I swear I can hear him say, Aw, oh, man. Light this sky base up like it's an RGB keyboard. Quick question. What does this one block cage and global warming have in common? They're both killing polar bears. Oh, yeah, that joke made me sad. We do manage to save her, though. And I would make these two polar bears breed, but unfortunately, I don't have any Coca-Cola. And that joke's gonna go over some heads. Day eight, and we spend the whole morning chopping down trees. We need a ton of wood for this next project. We then make a little walkway and line it with some spruce logs. Honestly, just any excuse to get more spruce into this build, I'll take it. And yeah, this platform is pretty small, but hey, just like my girlfriend always says, it doesn't need to be big. Besides, I'm sure that this platform will make up for its lack of size by being more passionate and more attentive. For those viewers who watch a ton of one block videos, you probably already know where I'm going with this build. This is going to be a mob XP farm. These are pretty much a requirement for one block. Now I'm going to kind of rush through building this because it's not uh, too exciting. And if you want to know how you can build this or like what I'm doing, you can always look up tutorials. They're all over YouTube. Plus, I've made this before in some of my old videos. You know, just trying to stay humble here, but you know, I am kind of pro at this point. No big deal. I am awesome. But seriously, for the next like two days, if I'm not building the platform, I'm just chopping down more trees, just completely deforesting everything. Although, well, hold on. Am I damaging the environment if I created the entire environment? There's a lot of philosophical thought to be unraveled in that one. Anyway, another thing to note, I need to get oak planks, not slabs, for this area where I want the mobs to spawn. When I was building this, I was kind of thinking that the mobs could not spawn on slabs when I made this, and it, it turns out I was right. So on day 11, we finish the floor, and then we get started on making the roof. Now the roof can and probably is better made out of slabs because you do not want any mobs spawning on the roof of this thing. Having creepers spawn on the top of this thing, that's a bigger disaster waiting to happen than a stoner's Taco Bell run. And for both of those, you don't want to clean that up. I finish up the outside of the spawner with some torches just in case, and then I put water in all of the runoff slots. I also almost fall to my death and I poop my pants a little bit. But it's okay. There's enough water here that saves my life and cleans my pants. On the morning of day 12, I can already see that this thing is working pretty good. It just needs a few finishing touches. And yes, this mob spawner does kill the mobs on impact, so it won't be giving me any XP. I don't really have any use for XP right now, so it's probably just safer to have all the mobs dead so I can collect their loot. That's better than having a bunch of creepers blow me. I mean, blow up. <clears throat> After all that hard work, I get hungry for some chocolate, and due to the insanity-inducing loneliness on the Sky Island, I mistake this dark oak for some chocolate. But hey, still tangy though. All of this dark oak is going to help me with my next project. But first, I'm going to start working on getting a fourth additional platform. This next platform will be much bigger, so I hope my girlfriend will be happy. Also, this platform will need some grass. And luckily, the one block has already started to spread some grass to some of the other dirt. So now we just need to make a path all the way down the platform. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Okay, we all know that I have no idea what I'm doing, uh, but just go with it, okay? Day 14, and I want to get a ton of spruce. So I decide to plant a mega spruce tree. Pretty cool, right? Wrong. Because the mega spruce tree turns a ton of this dirt into poodzel. The grass can't grow on that. And yeah, I said poodzel. I don't like Podzel. And speaking of poo, I do finally get a big brown streak all the way down to brown town. <laughs> it's rhyming, so it's classy. And for some reason right here, I thought I could use bone meal to spread grass, and I just left this clip in to show you just how dumb I really am. I start to harvest all the spruce, and while I'm super scared of heights, I must admit, looking down on the whole island here, it does look pretty good. With all these wooden structures and all the leaves on the edges, it all kind of looks like it's growing. And speaking of growing, I almost do the same dumb mega spruce tree thing again, but I do stop myself because I'm starting to grow a brain. I'm really getting a lot of growing wordplay in today. 
We get the general outline of the platform done, but we need some more dirt, so it's back to the one block. The only place you can get dirt in this world. We find a stray, but we know what to sing when we find a stray, don't we kids? Stray, stray, go away, and don't come back. Oh wait, that wasn't a rhyme. Day 15, and I wake up and decide to give my little rabbit breakfast. No reason, I just think she's cute. Hey, not today, stray. Uh, okay, even, even when I rhyme, it's not a nursery rhyme guy. Sh shouldn't be writing nursery rhymes, no noted. Oh, and there was this thing. I find this fox, and then like 10 blocks later in the one block, I finally get some berries. And if you guessed that there would be no more foxes spawning in the rest of the playthrough, then you're our big winner. Tell them what they've won, Captain. That's right, sorrow. We get another bunny and yet another polar bear, but still, I'm really upset that we aren't going to get a fox now. I try to make myself feel better by making this baby bunny. And, oh, yeah, this totally works. I feel great now. This is the cutest thing ever. And if a baby bunny doesn't cure your depression, I can't help you. Besides, I've got a ton of other cool animals. I don't give a fox, bro. Ooh, you suck. <laughs> okay, uh, day 16. Uh, we've got enough dark oak to get working on our next project. I get the framework set for this house, and then I have to get my ankles set, because it's broken. And I am in need of medical attention. But, ankies or no, I make some good progress on getting all the dark oak slabs set out. A house like this lets me fulfill my dream of cosplaying, as a wood elf. Building in Skyblock is kind of weird, because you only get so many blocks and block types, you're kind of limited and like forced to use renewable blocks for the most part. Also, you're like really limited in space, so you have to be super efficient with everything you do. Yeah, oh, and uh, did I mention you also have to be careful because, you know, you're way up in the sky at all times? The void do be hungry. And as much as I love living in this giant brown piece of poop, I should probably try to add some more color. So we start to grab a ton of dark oak leaves. And yeah, we basically spend all day harvesting and then replanting dark oak. We're doing this so that eventually it'll all be worth it and the house will end up looking probably bad. I mean, come on, we all know that this will still probably not look too good. Day 18 and we start to place all the leaves. I put these little porches or slash lookout things on each side of the house because adding leaves to them makes the house look bigger, more full, and more like a full tree from out front. But also, I kind of just like the aesthetic of having these like cool off symmetry porches. So now, I get to wake up each morning and look out over the abyss while I recite Shakespeare. Or I, I just walk outside to fart. But both are good. I still have to spend a lot of the day growing and regrowing trees, and that's kind of a big part of Skyblock when you're trying to do a lot of building, at least in the early game. The house isn't nearly finished, but just like a freshman in their dorm room, I decide it's better to go to sleep in here with no furniture or front door. I guess that's safe. But after having a nightmare that Harrowbrine came into my house and spooned me last night, I decide that maybe doors are good. I also add some flowers out here on the porches as well. I'm trying to add some furniture, like end tables or something, and I, I, I just hate this. Dark oak on dark oak looks really bad, and... None of this is coming together quite what I was hoping for. The look from the outside is pretty good, though. I do like how this all came together. And hey, just like I learned growing up in California, as long as you're beautiful on the outside, it doesn't matter how rotten you are on the inside. <laughs> Seems legit, right? I didn't stay up too late and find out my guard dogs are the worst in the world. This reminds me of like when you have that little yappy chihuahua. They're barking like crazy, but then as soon as you get close to them, just like, uh, oh, you know what? Um... Actually, never mind. Do you have food? Are we friends now? And on day 20, I gotta say, this house is okay to wake up in. Not too bad, after all. Well, at least for the captain standards, it's not too bad. We now almost have grass spread over to the new platform, but we still don't quite have enough dirt. We get close, but it turns out the grass really isn't greener on the other side. Or, well, the grass, the grass didn't get to the greener other side. It's, you guys know what I'm saying. Then, I discover this game changer. I see that this mod pack has Mr. Crayfish. Mr. Crayfish's furniture mod is a mod made by Mr. Crayfish with furniture. Okay, a lot of the stuff in this mod pack is pretty self-explanatory. You guys can't keep up? Uh, I don't know. Kind of disappointed. I had this simple oak desk. Then I put down this little small granite table. 
And I can already tell, this is what I'm going to be doing for the next few days. I got this little patio with my little pupper and his food bowl. A few other items on the other patios. And then, ta-da, check out this big reveal. This little treehouse came out looking pretty good. Seriously, I don't have any like funny little twist on this here. Looking back at this footage, this house came out really nice. Especially for how small and compact this is with all of our limited resource. This is kind of one of my best houses. And I do need to give all the credit to Mr. Crayfish making these things look super nice. And just as I start to feel a little bit of joy in my heart, for the first time, I take a look at my pond and I come right back to the reality that my builds suck. So I try to add some of Crayfish's fences here and make it look a little bit nicer, but I'm hoping I get some lily pads or fish or anything. This pond could use any kind of help. This next shot right here, it's, it's not important for the challenge, but I just mean, look at this moon. These shaders kind of make this guy look like zombie Jesus. See you in three days, bro. On the start of day 22, and I can see the sunrise through my blinds, and I, I gotta say, this place does look pretty cool. I'm trying to make a lot of jokes, but gotta give credit where it's due here. Oh, but speaking of sick, this grass has spread just like a deadly disease all the way to this platform. And now we can finally start to build our animal pen. We get the sides all done, then we add some nicer fences as the sun sets. Then we add some more fences to split the platform up so that each animal has their own pen. I heard your comments from the engineering video, and you guys hate mixing animals just as much as I do. So this time, we're going to make sure that everyone gets their own little space. Just like in a high school lunchroom, all these animals have split up into their own little groups. Don't worry, mushrooms. You guys are definitely the cool kids. Psh, what a bunch of dorks. Day 23, and we get the chickens in their pen. Patricia, looking great in her pen. And then I try to make some scrambled eggs, but I misclick, and I end up hatching a bunch of chickens. And I don't mean to ham it up, but this animal platform does look egg excellent. Don't you, don't, don't you moosh, don't you mooshuma agree? I don't have a pun for the mushrooms. Now that the XP farm, treehouse, and animal pens are all done, I think it's finally time to get back to hitting the one block. This next phase is the ocean phase. And as a captain, I was pretty hyped about it. I'm so excited, in fact, I wet my pants because of the ocean. I want to be ready to have a bunch of water in my pants. Come on now, that's just being prepared. And just like Michelangelo is known for painting the ceiling, this teenage mutant ninja turtle almost splatters himself all over the roof of my cage. But luckily, we do save the turtles. So does that? I guess that kind of makes me like Splinter, huh? You guys get the Ninja Turtle reference, right? I still have no idea how old my audience is. And that is the beginning of our aquarium. Also, there's a bunch of coral in one block, but like, if you harvest coral, it kills it. If you try to bring it out of the water, it dies. So like, wh why is this part of one block? It's it's really upsetting. Uh, this is kind of just like the fox thing. It's, it just makes me mad. Speaking of dumb, this drowned is looking pretty silly right now. And by the end of the day, I do come to the realization that this ocean phase means that this little pond, it's going to need an upgrade to be a proper sea. So I start to raise the water level. I add these sea salty boys, because you know how the captain loves to tickle a pickle or two. And then this happens. A fish spawns and then immediately starts dying, and I don't have any water in my bucket. So I rush to go get some, and it seriously only takes me like half a second, but still, he dies. I guess this one is kind of understandable, because I didn't have water in my bucket, but dude, it gets so much worse, trust me. I mean, watch this. The next fish, I actually have water in my bucket, and it still dies. You only have like a half a second window to get fish. I didn't realize, unless you actually, like, have water on the one block or close around the one block, the fish are pretty much as good as fish sticks. And now that I said that, I'm hungry and angry. But luckily, I do figure this out pretty quickly. We catch this little guy, and I take a picture of this fish so that I can put it on my Tinder profile, because I guess that's a thing guys do on their dating profiles, is pictures with the fish they've caught. I then decide that the stone floor looks not so great, so I carefully, painfully, try to replace all the stone with ocean monument blocks. By day 24, I have enough to get the floor covered, and yeah, it's looking pretty good. I mean, better than just cobble, that's for sure. I also take out the dirt, because it's time to go from snowboarding to surfboarding. Or wait, did I just, what did I just call surfing? <laughs> then we get this guardian. I do think it's kind of funny how these guys are some of the hardest things to fight in vanilla, but when they spawn in just like meter deep water in a cage, they, they look pretty pathetic, I'm not gonna lie. 
Also, Diamond Hype. I think this is the first one of the playthrough, too. And I did turn some sand into window panes. I added them. Uh, I, don't, I don't even... Can you see? Does it even really matter? But then again, according to my dad, everything I do doesn't matter, so... It's fine. Whatever. No big. A quarter of the way done, and I'm loving this mod pack, I gotta say. What I'm not loving is how this Elder Guardian just pulled a It's Nothing Personal Kid and teleported behind us, right out of the cage, just like that. So I decide since I've only got a stone sword, maybe a bow is a better way to deal with this. I need to go to the mob farm though, I need to grab some arrows. But that does mean that now I have a ton of mobs right behind me. This goofy one-eyed monster trying to blow his load on me. So, cool. By the way, I'm totally hiding behind this log and he still managed to hit me. Which means, yeah. That's right, even though I'm wearing protection from the one-eyed monster, I still get splattered in the face. We do eventually kill it, uh, even though seeing a Elder Guardian on a sky island like this is so weird, it's like so out of place. I do go and I feed the mushrooms, but they don't give me milk, so sadly, I'm gonna need to circumcise this one so I can milk him. I then take a big gulp of utter juice, and man, this this video has way too many innuendos. Uh, on a less gross note, we get a dolphin. Now. I have to figure out how to move the dolphin from the cage all the way down to the aquarium without having him flop off the side of the island. So here we go. We then pull a sneaky little trick. We make a man-made river down the middle of the platform all the way to the pond. Turns out it was a good thing I wet my pants earlier because now I'm well prepared for this soggy sky island. But just to help our flippery little friend, I do decide to pee in the river to keep it nice and warm. Reminds me of the... This hitting a little too close to home, it reminds me of the lazy river at a water park. Ugh, ugh, dude. And at first I, I thought it was working, but the dolphin anime betrays me and tries to force me back into the cage, where I presume he'll start to farm the one block and proceed to do the play out without me, uh, at which point I guess he would then take over my YouTube channel and yeah, I gotta admit, I would definitely watch a dolphin play Minecraft. Yes, absolutely. Now, finally, we have a fish, a turtle, and a dolphin all jamming down in our big pond. So I do decide to fill in the river and then I break it all up. Huge, huge dumb mistake, uh, but you'll see all that soon. We do get some more of these little pickles tickled down here. And then this. Okay, tell me how this is fair. We have water in here to save any fish, but then a sponge and a fish spawn at the same time. So the water gets sucked up and now the fish dies. Cool, one block, like, real cool. Day 26, and we get another dolphin, which means I need to redo the river all over again. See, told you, big dumb. This time, I'm not going to jump in the water, so I can't get tricked by this glorified trout. No, dude, you don't get my pee anymore. You haven't earned it. Actually, though, this dolphin is pretty graceful as he jumps into the water, so I'm inspired, and I decide to be just as graceful, and I jump in too. Gotta say, I think I nailed it. 10 out of 10. Next, we find Nemo. Gotta say, wasn't that hard, Martin. Then, we get ourselves another bucket of cod, which now that I say it out out loud, kind of sounds like a menu item at a really bad seafood restaurant. Yeah, I'm gonna take your girlfriend to Red Lobster. Give her the old bucket of cod. We then get Donatello to join old Michelangelo, but one of the ninjas tries to make a break for it, and like, Wow, I have to say, it is so annoying to try to push all this sea life around on dry land. That rebellious nature actually inspires this next dolphin, and I am so done with this. I just push her into the water source and I give up. You know what? That's your home now. Deal with it. Next, we get this little guardian, and while he puts up a good fight, he's no big deal. Then, we get this big guardian. And it's a big deal, because this is one of the closest times I get to death in the whole playthrough. I kind of panicked there and just started spam clicking, doing some bedrock attacks, before I finally get hidden behind this tree. We do manage to pick him off, but man, that was harder than it should have been. Now we just need some quick cow cream, and I'm not sure what's more disgusting, uh, utter juice or cow cream, but well, they both taste great. We then get this dolphin safely toward the pond, whether she likes it or not. And on day 27, it's starting to look like the aquarium is getting a little bit too crowded. I basically have two options here. I can build the sides up, but then it'll be really hard to get new animals in. Or I could try to build the base down. 
So this of course means that I need to try to carefully get under the aquarium and try not to let any of the animals fall out, but I'm, if, if I'm saying it out loud, so. I think we all know where this is going, so let's just skip to the end. Almost all the dolphins just decide that they would rather unalive themselves than stay with me for one more second. Kind of sounds like all the girls I've ever asked out. Ouch. We then use my sad boy tears to raise the water level one block higher. And then I pour out one wither flower to honor our fallen flippery boys. And even though I thought that phase would be my favorite, turns out it was a nightmare and I'm glad it's over. Next up, this phase is um, the fifth one, I think. Yeah, jungle dungeon phase. So we get rid of the river for real this time, and uh, I'm just fine with this because I'm honestly pretty done with the ocean life. And now that we have no more fish coming in, it's safe to seal up the whole aquarium. And well, for this part, remember how the captain has like 300 IQ? No? Yeah, well, I had forgotten and I needed to remind myself real quick. I started to fill up the aquarium to the top level, and then I decided I wanted a see-through floor. So all I have to do is just get out of the water before I close it up and I'll just place this block under me and not get trapped in the aquarium with no air. And so that's immediately the opposite of what I do. So at this point, I don't wanna like break the glass cause you only get so much sand. So I'm trying to chop up the wood, but by the time I've realized this is a bad idea, it's, it's kind of too late. Like I've already committed. <laughs> I get down, I get down to half a heart because I almost drowned myself in my own aquarium. I almost drowned in Skyblock. I'm, I'm honestly not even surprised. Like this would be the perfect on brand way for the captain to die. Ladies and gentlemen, half a heart. I'm honestly kind of proud here. I'm like the best worst YouTuber out there. But on day 29, I do fix up the top and make everything look even. In pure spite, I even do decide to shake my butt in the faces of all the sea creatures, and order is restored. A perfect ending for the worst phase, and I am so glad it's over. But after I had made that aquarium, I actually kind of decide that what I want to do is I want to make a mini biome for every phase of one block. And I realized I didn't really do much for the winter phase. So now I'm going to go on the far side of the farm, and I'm going to start to build the ice wall. I get every little bit of white blocks that I can, which means even getting some concrete made. I do eventually get the ice wall done, and it looks like winter is coming after all. Oh, I'll pour one out for that show. Then I start to make a raised platform. My idea here is I kind of wanted this area to be the highest because you know it's like the mountains and then down on the bottom is where the ocean is. It kind of makes sense thematically, right? I go to bed because I do not want any white walkers spawning and then the next day I start to turn bone meal into bone blocks because even though I have all that fake snow it's still not enough at this point. Then finally we get started on the igloo at the very top. And yeah it's a little bit blocky, kind of ugly but I mean come on even igloos in vanilla are pretty ugly and that's like the best mojang could come up with so. Plus remember I only get like a limited amount of white blocks. So with all that considered, I still think this is pretty cool. Stop! Uh, come on now, if you didn't think I was going to make a cool pun when we were building an igloo, you clearly are not crewmate material. But if you knew that I was going to make that bad pun the second I started today, then welcome to the crew. It's ice to melt you. See, there's a problem here. This absolute dump truck booty, these Pixar mom massive butts, all these straight up giant face crushing back units, just they can't fit. <laughs> what am I, ugh. Ugh. Okay, I... Uh, save the polar bears, people. I don't know, I have nothing else to say. I'm, I'm done with this. Moving on, day 31, and it's time to see what the jungle phase has in store for us today. We get a couple seeds to tame this little parrot, and... Oh, that's a lot of seeds, okay. Didn't, uh, didn't work there. Okay, we'll just get some more seeds, that's fine. <laughs> No? No? Okay. More seeds, I guess? I had no idea that parrots took so many seeds. You know, for such tiny little things, you guys sure can eat a lot. And you know what? No shame. I can relate. I'm putting you on my shoulder, but judging by how many seeds you just ate, I'm afraid you're going to separate my collarbone. Next up, 
this happens. Remember when I said the Elder Guardian was the scariest thing in the playthrough? Well, enter the Evoker. And even though I take him down pretty quickly, just a few swings, the Vex turn out to be a nightmare on this tiny little Sky Island. I mean, honestly, I'm in a really tough area right here. Because every time I try to stop and eat or even like fight back, they take a chunk of health. And I actually get really lucky here because I have no idea how to handle this. But the Vex keep running into the Wither Rose that's on the top of the one block cage. And if that wasn't there, don't know if I would have gotten through this part right here. We do get back to mining though, and I find this Ocelot. And on a side note, in this version of Minecraft, you actually can't tame ocelots. Oh, and then this sunset shot right here, it's not really relevant to the story. I just thought it was kind of romantic. <laughs> hey, what if we kiss under the mushroom udders? No, 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 I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just goofing with you. Unless... But then, tragedy strikes. We gain a panda, but we lose a parrot. I decide to plant this rose instead. Poor Polly. And... As I go to bed that night, the chat log reminds me of his death. Boo. Day 32. We get some jungle trees from the one block chest. It's pretty sweet. I grow the trees, then harvest them for more saplings till I have four. Then we grow this crazy pig boy. And I gotta say, I know you're impressed. What? I'm not compensating for something. Well, why would you think that? Who told you? We then get two pandas. And just like pandas in the real world, they don't seem to be very good at breeding. And finally, on day 33, we get a chest with some sugarcane and bamboo. So I'm going to need a place to plant and then grow all of these. So I decide, why not build under the jungle tree? Makes sense, right? So I waterfall my way down, and I start to build what will become the biggest platform add-on yet. Out of only jungle blocks. This is going to turn into our jungle oasis. A little temple out in the desert. Kind of reminds me of Vegas, but with less damp, sticky moss everywhere. Ugh. We plant the sugarcane and the bamboo, and eventually I'm going to redo all this. I'm going to have all of these lines be sand and sugarcane, but this is just to get a start for right now. And being the size queen that I am, I definitely want to make that platform a lot bigger. That's going to require going back to the one block. So, more one block means more of me running around with only two hearts. I have to keep moving and dodging and getting my heart rate way too high. Trust me, you do not want to smell a sweaty captain. But I managed to get a few good dodges and hits in with a bow when we kill the Vex. But just then, right when I think I'm safe to stop and eat, yeah. It's a good thing I had a totem because that Vex just popped me right in the face. The only good news is we lost a totem while fighting an evoker. So we're going to get another one right away, but it might be time to finally get some armor. Yes, this video is halfway done, and I just now get my first piece of gear. A diamond helmet, because my brain needs all the protection it can get, and some iron gear too. And if you're wondering, like, what's my reasoning behind waiting so long is there's no renewable way to get diamonds or iron, so I was holding off for as long as I could. I figured I might need to make a pick or something. The next evoker comes up, and I actually managed to deal with him pretty easily, so I guess the gear did work out pretty well. But just to be a little bit safer, we do add on two more gaffles. So everything is going great, right? Wrong. If you've ever watched any of my videos, you know that it can never just be okay. So of course, I lose my second parrot. <sighs> but hey, at least we get another parrot right away. Oh my god, look, so many seeds, this is ridiculous. Now that we've got this parrot, it is time to sit him right here. I feel like I'm being a bad parent again. I'm just putting all my animals into timeout so that they don't go run and hurt themselves. Speaking of animals, we also get enough bamboo so we can go feed this little cutie. All right, now tell me where the orange chicken is right now. Day 36, and I add the blue orchid to some flower pots. Yes, this is the best flower in Minecraft. Disagree, don't at me, cause you're wrong. Get that lily of the valley out of my face. We do manage to get this panda's butt into a boat and try to take him to his new jungle biome home. I then take off the water source and I just like watch him fall. Uh, good luck, little buddy. Yeehaw. Next up, we get a chest and I see, uh, speak of the devil. And with this chest, that means it's time for the next phase. I was figuring after a 
jungle temple. Maybe we'll get something like a diamond phase, a Y11 phase or something. I don't know. But we end up getting the desert phase, which is still pretty cool. And luckily, right away, we get a villager too. And if you're wondering, was he an absolute headache? Uh, yeah, 100%. I think he heard my reputation, how I treated my villagers before, so he's trying his luck with flying off the skyblock, but I do manage to talk him down and promise I've changed my ways. <laughs> but I haven't. And for now, we managed to just get this little guy back to my house where he's going to be nice and safe. Or at least that's what I thought. On day 37, we get our villager to sign up at FarmersOnly.com, and I see that he trades wheat. That's good. Because I got that. We use bone meal to enrich our flour. And then we start to get our very first monies. Which is great, because maybe now I can actually buy myself a better computer. Hmm. I wonder if Alienware will take emerald payments. Eventually, after all those trades, our villager evolves into Village Mander, and he learns Pumpkin Trade. And that's not so good, because we don't have those. And now that we're starting to get into some farmer trades, it's about time that we upgrade our farm. Now, of course, I, I could just add on another farm right next to the first farm, but what do you think? The cat is just some basic bee? Okay, you're right. I, I am, sir. But I do aspire to be better, so I want to make the next farm a little bit cooler. I make a raised platform right over the first farm, and I begin to fill it in with dirt. Unfortunately, I run out, so I'm just going to have to leave this and fix it later. Is what a smart person would do. But I decide this is looking a little too good, so I gotta mess it up. I place wood in the rows for the pumpkins to spawn on. I didn't know this, but that doesn't work. So this raised farm is just like me. It looks great, but it's totally useless. And at the moment, I can't really do too much more if I don't have any dirt or sand. So it's back to the one block. Come to me, Bobby. And then we get another vill. Oh, no? Just a wandering trader? Well... I'm sure he's going to have some amazing trades for us. Come on. You guys already know these trades are going to be poop. He's selling his mushroom. Huh. Oh, pretty sure that counts as prostitution. Anyway, we get some cactus. That's actually pretty cool. We plant this down in the oasis. And then I see that our panda is in a little bit of trouble. Then, all of a sudden, I have to jump into superhero mode. This sad panda has somehow managed to get himself stuck on this tiny little ledge. I bravely rush in. And all is well I killed him, didn't I? Yeah, I... I just, I just killed the panda. Cool, bro. We then get a Vindicator, but stuck in this cage. It's more like a... It's more like a Vindic... Vindic... Suck? Uh, no, no. Oh, by the way, uh, serious side note, really quick. In one block, it is really important to stay organized. I'm kind of trying to keep each phase in its own chest. Sort of. We do get another Wandering Trainer. And, of course, another disappointment. Brown die. Come on. Can't fool us. You know, you're just trying to sell us a big dump. So this means now I have a prostitute and a poop merchant. Man, my island is awesome. Now the third wandry boy does have beetroot seeds. Normally I would throw beetroot seeds in the trash, but since our farmer does love dem beets, I'm in. Turns out it's time to drop the beets. Now it's time to pump up the beets. And it turns out this farmer moonlights as a DJ because he really digs the beats. That, that was just like the same punchline three times in a row. <laughs> Ugh. So bad. But check out these sales. Yes. Sell me, daddy. Oh, whoa. The traders do not like that I just said that because they immediately leave the Discord call on me. Yeah, honestly, I, yeah, I respect that. We get back to the one block. Shoot this Vindicator right between the eyeballs and get yet another dump merchant. Honestly, the only reason I'm really even showing this right now is to highlight the fact that we are getting way too many wandering traders. I'm actually going to take a little bit of a break here and make a bunch of boats. This way we can get all the wandering traders out somewhere safe and out of my way. But mostly just out of my way. I had to like backtrack and go all around my island trying to find each trader. It kind of felt like a video game where you have to go to each level and find the MacGuffin. I don't... I mean... Well, technically, Minecraft is a video game. I don't know... I don't know why I said it like that. We had some rain during the night, so I channel my inner mom, and I make sure that these poor little boys don't catch a cold. We build a small roof to keep these tradey boys dry. I actually think it looks pretty cool with the shaders, how it has, like, the light coming through the leaves right there. 
And then we actually do go out to get like the last few rogue traders. I get this guy off of the top of my farm and we do some extreme boating off the platform and we finally get everybody home safe. Then I take my time and aim right in this guy's eyeball and then right in the other one. Feels good. So on day 44, we hit our next benevolent gift. Seems like it's time to 420 blaze it because we're headed to the nether. But first, since we do actually have some lava for the first time, we're gonna make a cobblestone generator. So pull up a chair champ, cause it's captain's tutorial time. Cobblestone generator needs four blocks with an extra block deep here in the second spot. Water goes in the very first spot, then lava goes all the way in the fourth spot. So the cobble will be created right here in the third spot. So instead we advance on to the next phase. I actually do craft up a bunch of bone blocks I want to take those down so I can expand onto the oasis. But like immediately after doing that, I realize I should just be using the cobblestone generator. It is really boring and I hate this, but I do manage to get enough cobble slabs to expand the floor of the oasis so that I can place sand on top of it without it, without it, you know, like falling away. I then start to randomly place some more jungle blocks on the floor to make the oasis a little bit bigger. And then I even climb up the big jungle tree because I'm trying to get some saplings. And yeah, you already know your boy is super scared of heights. So this really shows some dedication. And uh, so, speaking of scared of heights, dude, oh no. I, uh, I waste a totem falling from a tree. Like how do I even make it out of one block doing stuff like this? I get all the jungle saplings, and I plant them down on the oasis. I then decide that because I suck so much at falling off of all these high areas, I should probably make some walkways that'll safely let me move around as much as possible. But yeah, it's not like I'm going to need these, right? I'm as sure-footed as a goat. A goat with no legs. Okay, so by day 48, with the two walkways down to the oasis and looking pretty good, I am pretty glad that I actually did this. I then spend a day trying to farm more jungle saplings. So I plant a jungle tree on top of the one block and it looks so goofy. Oh, and I also uh, plant this one out here so that you and I can enjoy the sunset together. <laughs> you know, I realized when I fell off that jungle tree, really, I was falling for you, loyal viewer. Day 50 and we get a bit of rain, but I gotta say the jungle's looking really good when it's wet. We then spend all of the day adding sand around the oasis. Don't tell Anakin. And we spend all of that night getting started on our cursed temple. The problem is I have super limited block selection for this, so it doesn't really end up going well, like at all. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know if this is like a spoiler or anything, but I'm just gonna let you guys know this, this thing ends up looking really bad. I do end up changing it like on day 90, but for most of the playthrough, this pyramid is just absolute garbage. I'm running out of terracotta, so I have to fill it in with like what's left. It actually looks like a... <laughs> it's a Picasso. It's abstract. I really do think, honestly, a child playing with blocks could do a better job with this one. We set out some sugarcane here in the desert. This is for function, but also just to look good. Kind of like my muscles. But also, just like my muscles, it uh, comes up a little bit small. And uh, yeah, at the time I thought this kind of looked okay, but looking back on it, oof. On day 52, I wake up and I just decide to throw this egg out my window. Don't know why I did that, but let's go with it. I then see that the only villager I have is just replaced with a zombie. Not turned into a zombie villager, by the way, mind you. I, I, that would be okay. I could change him back into a villager. He was just straight up replaced with a zombie. We get some piglings from the one block and... They're not too impressive. But what is impressive is that next we get some ancient debris. So we finally do craft up a diamond pick and we grab it. Also, we get some obsidian, which will help us get an enchantment table, finally. And then we find one of these again. Honestly, at this point, I'm getting so good at killing these evokers, I'm basically just farming totems at this point. Sadly, it's time to now execute the prisoner. My ancestors are smiling at me, Imperials. Can you say the same? Next day, we get a Strider, and even though they have absolutely no use for me, I still decide to save him. Yeah, I could be a good guy sometimes. 
Oh, and really quickly, warning for headphone users. Yeah. This is so loud and annoying. Ouch. Don't get me wrong, I get it. Jump scares and all that, but... There's a line between jump scares and just murdering my ears, and you crossed it, my guy. On day 54, we get this hogling who presents us her buttocks. Mmm, yay. I am a pious man. And I shall not be tempted by your sinful ways. Oh, and we do get some netherite, so... But at this point in the playthrough, I'm guessing that we probably won't get too much netherite. Ooh! Did I scare you? Am I a spooky boy? Then we get this sound. Which means my cage gets broken, I guess. We get a huge flood of nether mobs, and I gotta say, with all this wood, this is actually pretty bad right now. But, we do manage to kill the ghast and the blaze before they can set anything other than the cobble on fire. So, none of our platform burns up. Smokey would be proud. Then, we just have to repair the cage, and yeah, for a, a boss event, this isn't so bad. If that's the worst thing the one block can throw at us, I think we should be fine. Oh, look at this. I I guess some of the piglings decided to stay around. These frat boys, I guess, didn't get the hint. Day 55, and everything is looking pretty good. We get yet another strider, and at this point, I just kind of feel bad for these things. I mean, it's not like I'm ever going to get enough lava to give these guys a proper home. Then, like, soon... Some of the homies come through, and like, we just start like, hella blazing it up, you know? After that, we finally get enough obsidian to make an enchantment table. So now, we just need some leather. Oops, I mean, I didn't say leather, I mean, we need some lead air. Don't, don't worry, little cows, I'm sure, sure you'll be fine. Whew, did you guys just catch my really quick save right there? Those cows almost figured out our plan. We actually do have a decent amount of leather from earlier, so I can start making some books, but... We are going to eventually need some more. I throw my enchantment table down in the spooky temple, and we head to bed. Unfortunately now, we are going to need some more leather. Oh no. Oh, not in front of the babies. Wait, what? What's that little guy? You think killing your parents would be a totally poggers TikTok prank? Alright, bet. We set up some bookshelves, but we are still going to need some more. And we get another ghast, so... Goodbye, eardrums. We then get this blaze. And, sadly, while I was trying to puff puff pass, I commit a huge party foul, and I drop the blaze rod. Now our home, that's made entirely out of wood, is sort of on fire. <laughs> My bad. We managed to put everything out, and the only thing that we lost was the old gate. So I decide it's time to upgrade, and we get ourselves a fancy gate. <laughs> yes. And then, on day 57, we get, like, the best chest in the game. I mean, look at this. Then, after looting and breaking this bad boy, we're moving on to the next phase. Turns out, it's... Uh, I don't know. My mod pack kind of bugged out here. I don't know why it's not telling me the phases in the chat log anymore. And you know what? If I don't get to know what the phase is, then neither do you. Yeah, that's right. I'm keeping you guys in the dark, too, until the big reveal. And... It's the B phase, that's it. Did you, was the, was the tension worth it? Did you guys love the big plot twist? Okay, I think it's actually called the plenty phase, like milk and honey, land of plenty, I guess. Look, I didn't name it, okay? You can call me out for all these cringy jokes and that's totally fair, but this one's not on me. Okay, so before we get started on the, <laughs> before we get started. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. Before we get too deep into the B phase, I really want to try and make my cobblestone generator a little less terrible. We set up this piston right next to where the cobblestone spawns. Then I run a little redstone towards this redstone torch. We then put some more redstone in the butt part of the machine, and then a repeater on the next level. And yeah, I'll admit it. I looked up a tutorial on how to get this to work. I don't. I mean, I don't really know. Uh, look, it ended up working, so uh, I'm not going to ask too many questions. I then add a long runway where all the stone can collect, and I try to make it look at least a little decent. I think that I place this wooden part far enough away from the lava so that it doesn't catch on fire. But hey, if I'm wrong, it's no big deal, right? I mean, it'll just catch the entire wooden platform on fire and destroy a huge chunk of my work. Oh no, is that foreshadowing? I like. Day 60. And I start making a small flower patch right here. 
which I surround with these fancy fences. Uh, by the way, have you noticed I'm kind of obsessed with all these little fancy fences? I'm putting them all over my build. Of course, not as obsessed as I am with you. You big, sexy, stupid, voluptuous viewer, you. Oh my god, stop flirting with me, you crazy viewer. I need to focus on trying to catch this zombie villager. Ugh, oh, and he's dead. And you know what? I blame you. So I make a boat so I can catch the next zombie villager. We make some shredded beef, and finally, get a full set of bookshelves. In my spooky temple library, day 61, and we hit the bee jackpot. The bee pot, the, the honey pot of jacks. It's uh, We get a lot of bees. Sadly, without a bee's nest, they all die off pretty quick. I then enchant my bow, and turns out we get power three. Then just efficiency three, boo. And then feather falling, <laughs> and yeah, I'm the kind of guy that needs that. Best enchant so far. I decorate the base with a skull, because I'm super cool. I then decide to upgrade my boots with netherite, because I gotta have them dope kicks. Also, since now we do have an enchantment table, we're gonna have to redo this XP farm, uh, so that it actually has XP, you know? But that's easy to do, just need to raise the level. And by easy, I mean that of course it's super dangerous, and of course I mess it up. A creeper blows my bottom open. Oh, ooh, why did I, why did I phrase it like that? Gross. But after panicking for a little while, we do manage to fix this. So now, when the mobs fall, they'll end up alive with only half a heart. This means we can kill them and get XP. Why, why am I explaining this? I mean, you guys all know how an XP farm works. So yeah, there it is. Easy XP. Now what I'm doing is I'm carefully looking through and trying to see if I see the word zombie villager. Okay, I think I saw one, so I'm going to head up a few blocks and place some blocks here to stop the mobs from coming down the bad guy pipe. We carefully pick off everything that's not a villager, and then make this area here a little bit of roofing so that we can put him in a boat without him dying in the sun. And boom, into the boat he goes. So I get him in the boat, and I drive him safely over to this spot, and by the way, let's all just recognize that I could definitely make a joke here about him poking me in the butt, but I'm not doing it, because I'm far too classy for that. <laughs> that's, honestly, that's the biggest joke so far. We get a brewing stand, and now we can start to play God. By day 63, we start making our potion of weakness. Put some gunpowder in there to make it a bit more spicy. And just a few minutes later, we find another zombie villager. Once again, we then clog up the sin chute and get this next zombie and, oh, just a little guy. Just a baby. And now it's time to go Dr. Frankenstein and bring these stinky boys back to life. Golden apple for you, and a golden apple for you. And then we wait for a long time. And ta-da, two squeaky clean villagers. Oh, 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 it's only this one. Okay, dude, I told my viewers that I could cure zombie villagers. You're making me look really bad right now. Ah, see, there it is, ta-da! Okay, so let's get this boat over here, and we will set you guys right here till I can figure out what to do with you. Unplug the bad guy pipe, and there it is, the evil tube is flowing again. We then make this, like, super janky, really makeshift little area to keep the villagers safe, because I am not losing them again. I'm not going to let them pull a dad and go out to the supermarket looking for milk, then never come back. Mm-mm, not today. The next day, the kid is still a kid. Ugh. Jeez, come on. Grow up, start paying taxes and just losing your hair already. Gah. I spent all day farming XP and trying to get better enchants. I'm going for a silk touch. But hey, it's all worth it, fellas, because that night we finally get ourselves a little puss- Oop, nope. Stop. I will not. Wait a minute now. Shrek, they literally call him Puss in Boots. Let's be real, Shrek is the gold standard. Day 66, and now our villagers' childhood dreams have all officially died, and they are both adults. And upon hearing this, they then immediately have a midlife crisis, wherein they go and run out to buy a Mazda Miata. Yeah, that's right. Shots fired, Mazda Miata owners. I had two beds, but it is painfully obvious that this place is way too small. So it's time to expand it a little. And now, I'm getting a pretty good start on the villager dome. I see that all the villagers are already breeding. Oh, until I run up with a camera in their faces and ruin the vibes. 
Come on, don't be prudes. You know this is the kind of stuff that gets you big on Twitch, right? I'm making my roof for the villager dome out of leaves because I want to drag them into my wood elf cosplay. I get a Fletcher's... Uh, a Fletcher block? Um, I actually don't know what this block is called. I could probably just, like, look it up on Google. But I'm too busy putting in more leaves. We finally get a full roof set up, and I seal all the villagers in the dome with me inside of it. This kind of reminds me of that Drake and Josh meme. Captain! Where's the door hole? I break out shining style and replace the door with a trap door. In my mind, I'm thinking now the villagers won't be able to get out. And if you're seeing the problem with this, yeah, don't get ahead of me. I then put down some beds, because you know, that's how you make babies. <laughs> yeah, that's right, kids. If you just start placing down extra beds all around your house, you'll start collecting baby brothers and sisters in no time. Trust me. This villager wakes up, rams his face right into the trap door. Oh, classic villager. And then I start getting way into farming, which is classic captain. And what do you know? Day 69, and we make a baby. Dude, I swear I didn't plan that. So that was just... Just the power of day 69. And of course, to keep the memes going, this bee comes up to me and asks me if I like jazz. And the bee's nest has spawned next to our flowers. We then head back to the one block and we actually manage to get another bee's nest. And yes, I'm calling them bee's nests because they're not a hive and that bugs me so much. Get it? You guys, you guys got that, right? It bugs me? Because of bees? Come on now. It's day 69. I need to bring out all the dumb stuff. It's kind of gamer law. Speaking of making babies, we get this little baby bee. And honestly, looking at this little bee family with a baby in the middle, this is probably the most wholesome day 69 you'll ever see on any 100 day challenge. And speaking of little kids, it turns out the little villagers can run out of the trapdoor. And yeah, I didn't know that that could happen. Also, take note, there's definitely three kids that left and yeah, count them, only two come home. So, uh, ooh, that's brutal. Luckily, on the next day, we put down another bed, and I do actually see three kids, so they all came home safe, right? Or maybe they just made another baby when I wasn't looking? Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. Either way, we don't have to call child services anymore. I set up some branches in the tree, and then I get a little bit deeper into my wood elf kink, because now I'm going to shoot down and kill all the iron golems. Doing this might be the biggest perk of having villagers in one block. With the iron golems, we officially have infinite iron now. And we could totally make an iron farm, but I actually kind of prefer to like have the iron golems just roaming around the island. It adds a little bit more protection. Also, I like killing them with my bare hands. But if my psychologist asked, uh, it was definitely the first reason. Our Fletcher is giving us a huge bargain on sticks. It's the quickest way to make money. Economics 101. Also, we have an armorer who is giving us Costco sized deals too or Tesco, if you're from England. We are gonna try to get our armor leveled up so we can get some cheap diamond gear. And right away, we already get him to level two. Honestly, this is kind of our life for the next few days. Big sticks means big money. Big money means big wasteful spending on stuff that I'm just gonna throw away anyway. Like I said, economics 101. I continue to harass and wake up the villagers just so I can make useless dumb purchases like a true Karen. And soon, we get the trades we've been looking for. I then go full capitalist. I start breaking down nature just to make a quick buck. And soon enough, we have enough unearned acquired wealth to buy our designer pants. I get efficiency on my axe so I can destroy the world even faster. And I get a pretty dope iron sword too. Looting is top tier. I N O. I then slice up the prisoner's toes and I sleep like a baby afterwards. Day 73, and I'm still working on the one block, but I'm pretty busy just killing Iron Golem. Oh, oh, he's trying to give a flower to the kid. Ugh. This is like some Iron Giant level sadness. Oh, what am I talking about? That movie was way sadder. This isn't even close. We get some honey and some diamonds, and we kill some more giants. Oh, why did I... Now it's going to be stuck in my head every time I kill one of these guys. We uh, also get a phantom out of the one block. Cool, I guess. I also try to melee this guy because with looting on my sword, I can get more iron. I just gotta be careful. Ooh, gotta be careful. And eh, he's spanking my butt. Okay, he's absolutely destroying me right now. 
All right, uh, yeah, let's not get too greedy. Uh, maybe just use a bow from now on. This will be fine. After killing off all of these villagers' guardians and removing any hope they had of safety, their prices are looking pretty good. And hey, it's not tyranny if the UN doesn't find out about it. Take notes, Putin. We make an anvil from all this blood iron we've collected, and we craft up a pretty good fortune pick. We are now three quarters of the way done with the playthrough, and to mark this occasion, we get ourselves another little kitty cat. With all these bees, and these little kitty cats, and these dogs, gosh darn it if this isn't the cu- Gosh? Gosh darn it if this ain't the cutest? Oh, we hear this dumb sound again. Only this time I didn't have enough time to get away. So the block under me breaks, and I fall through, and oh man, is it a good thing that I made the oasis below me, because my life just flashed before my eyes with this one. And uh, yeah, other than that heart stopper right there, uh, this whole thing is not really a big threat. I mean, look at this, it's just slimes, some bees, so okay. Just kind of run around for like 10 seconds till the bees get ADD and stop attacking me. Then yeah, head to bed. Day 77, and all the villagers are huddled up in this one little corner. I think I can hear them whispering some kind of plans. Uh, they're going to wait till he goes to sleep, and then they're going to have the iron golems attack him. Ah, it's probably nothing. Anyways, who cares? I got diamond gear now. Also, I make some hoppers, but I'm going to need two more for the next thing. I wake up the next morning, and my neck hasn't been snapped, which means the villager's plan didn't work. We get a third hopper, which means we only need a little bit more iron. And so, we find this golem, and in just a few more shots, I'm gonna have all the iron I'm gonna need, and there'll be no worries, and of course the iron immediately falls off the edge. Everybody watching the video already knew that was coming. I think deep down even I kinda knew it. Luckily, not much later, this one, um, just kinda spawns inside of a wall. R.I.P. We then get our fourth hopper, and now we can head back to the XP farm. Just to be safe, we go and turn off our danger shaft, and uh... Okay, yeah, there's there's definitely a second meeting going on here. I hear it now. We then set up chests on the bottom and hoppers so that all of the loot that the mobs drop will be collected and it will have its own storage place here that's automated. We then open up the juicy bad boy tube and... Okay, now, now I'm just trying to sound bad. Now we have an easy XP farm and all of the loot will be safely stored away. Finally, by day 79... We've gotten all the way through the phase of plenty. In the very last plenty chest, we do get a name tag. This means I now have to choose one of the animals to name. And I'm going to go with my very first pupper and name him Mate. Because he's my first mate. I'm actually sitting in the recording booth saying that name out loud. It does sound kind of weird. And hey, look, if you guys can think of a better name for this little guy, you can put it down in the comments. And if you find a better one, I'll pin it. If you find a better one. All right, let's see what the next phase is. At the time I was doing this, I had no idea. I was honestly kind of hoping that we were getting so close to the end here. I was kind of hoping that maybe this would be the end phase, but then I just see this stone. So I realize that's probably not right. I then end the day by getting this sick pick. <laughs> sick pick, dude. Dude, why'd you send my girlfriend a sick pick, dude? Gross. Okay, I do spend like the entire day trying to figure out what this next phase is. And I'm pretty quickly coming to the realization that this phase is... It's pretty bad. I actually looked it up later. Turns out this is the desolation phase. And yeah, just like the name suggests, it's basically nothing. It does have some mycelia, which I have silk touch, so I can actually get something out of this. But I mean, this is about it. We get a visit from the Black Parade here. And I gotta be honest, I really don't care about like any kind of horse. Even a skeleton horse. It's like, we're playing on Skyblock here. But I mean, at this point, if it's gonna be free... Sure. Spooky boy rides again. The next day, we get this spicy little burrito again. I don't know why I called him that. Uh, but again, like at this point, killing evokers, it's just adding to my totem collection. I legit think we have like seven now. I then break the biggest gamer rule, I admit. I spend diamonds on a hoe, and I buy a diamond hoe. Actually, full confession, I go full simp and get an entire inventory of diamond hoes. But hey, at least we do level up the toolsmith. I really want to get some diamond tools. Day 82, and we get a Loyalty 1 book. But I mean, who needs that when I have subs like you that are Loyalty 69? Also, we then get this Luck Potion, and then we get two Evokers. So yeah, not so lucky, huh? I then get this Golem in the exact same place on this ledge. And somehow here, I don't immediately think I'm wasting my time. 
That's okay. I can just kill this golem until this brave and noble trader actually jumps in front of him. I don't want to sound like a terrorist here or anything, but your trades are uh, expendable if you're getting my meaning. Oh yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Finally, we do get our diamond pick. It's pretty good. Then we get our diamond sword, and this thing is even better. We then go to bed, because that hostage situation it made me a little tired. And on day 83, we get another seizure-inducing raid-slash-mob party thing. We got armored skeletons and an evoker, too. And honestly, if I didn't have all that villager diamond armor, this could have been pretty tough. But it's not. But hey, you know what? A for effort, guys. Now, please stop blowing holes in my cage. Day 84, we get some dumb skeletons. Then, we get this trash chest with just poison potatoes. And this phase really sucks. Not sure why it's even here. I mean, honestly, we should be hyped up getting towards the end. I'm honestly just going to try to go through these last days pretty fast. But hey, if you guys are bored, you need a little entertainment. Look, I got a bee on my face. I'm sucking his Honey Nut Cheerios. <laughs> so stupid. Day 85, and yes, we finally get through this phase and make it to the end. Probably should just say this before you get, like, too excited. We do need to break a thousand blocks of this phase before we actually get to the end portal. Still, this phase is going to be a lot funner. Funner. Funner? Funner is a word, right? Funner is not a word. And just a quick pause. I gotta say, as we're getting close to the end here, the base is looking really... Ugh, oh, never mind, I totally forgot about that temple. And I really gotta fix that thing. And look at this! We get ourselves the true best item in Minecraft. We then run out and start planting the potato. I sure do like planting potatoes. I think I might even try to make it my goal to plant the most potatoes in Hypixel Skyblock. That can't be too hard, right? Huh? What? Who's Technoblade? I decide to buy some stew, because, hey, why not? I then just buy some cookies, and I throw them out to my pets. Because, hey, they've been loyal and by my side this whole time. On day 86, we just push onward deeper into the end phase. First thing we'd find is these Endermites. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I had totally forgot that this mob was in vanilla Minecraft. Like, think about how rarely you see these little guys. I then decide to hit the Suspicious 2, and weakness. Ugh, come on. Boring. I already have that debuff in real life. Boo. I do manage to find this little pupper. And now mate will have a little... Oh, uh, well, uh, he'll have a mate. I guess. Day 87. When I hear that sound, I know I've either let out a huge fart, or there's a shulker nearby. Oh look, it's both. I start running around, looking for this thing everywhere when I get hit by one of its missiles. I start to float up and... Oh look, there it is. Honestly, that's a pretty good hiding spot way up here. But for some reason, it moves down to the cage, and I get an easy slap. Next, we get an Enderman. And honestly, I kind of don't really want to kill Endermen. Like, why not? They're pretty peaceful. I just want to let it go. However, I do find out later why this is kind of a bad idea. But for right now, eh, he ain't hurt nobody. And now on this day, before I get to the end and push on through the playthrough, I decide I should probably try to fix my temple. I set out a floor of cobblestone to catch all of the blocks that I'm about to break. Also, it kind of works as scaffolding, too. I then catch this guy red-handed... a uh, black-handed? What? Are Endermen, like, dark purple? The point is, I catch him stealing. I then go through the process of breaking down all the terracotta and standstone. It turns out, Anakin was right about sand all along. Now, instead of making a desert pyramid out of terracotta, I'm going to use it for its actual original intended purpose. And then I spend all day making this dope mesa formation. Then, I take another day, and I make another one over on this side. And now that we have our cool Red Rocks Canyon look, we can finally host Burning Man. I'll just have to buy more stew. That night, I get back to work on the temple. I decide I'm going to go with like a half desert, half nether kind of look. Because, you know, they're both hot. So that's, like, thematic, right? I start setting up the sides of the pyramid, and they're looking pretty good. Now this is starting to look like a more traditional Egyptian pyramid, rather than a crappy Aztec one. Yeah, that's right. Get bodied, Aztec pyramids. That night, we start to add blackstone to the base of the pyramid. And then, I get to work on one of the front obelisks. Finally, by the morning of day 92, we get this spooky basalt slash gilded obelisk tower. It's looking pretty good. I then add some soul sand and soil around the base of the pyramid to give it an even more nethery look. And then I just add some small details here and there. But then again, 
Isn't life all about the small details? Or something? I then add all these spicy blocks so that if I fall off the edge, I'll burn my feet too. And then I begin to make my true masterpiece. I've always wanted to make a monument to our true lord and savior, the upside down tea. So what better way to do that than with a bunch of mushrooms? We start off by making a red and a blue mushroom sack. And of course, we use the mycelium to make the shaft of the tea. Finally, we have to put a cap for the tea. And why not use some mushroom lights? And there it is. <clears throat> uh, it's a my monument to the upside down tea. All made out of desolation blocks. See, the whole point of this is I wanted to let you guys really know what I think about the desolation phase. It sucks di Oh, I almost forgot. Time to add a giant mushroom. Now I have some mushrooms growing on my mushroom. We get a ton of these little red bumps all over the place, just so the mushroom's a little extra spicy. And this, this part of the video right here is why you should never subscribe to my channel. Keeping with the theme of sin, I had another portal right at the base. I light it. <laughs> Sorry, it's just, what, what are we doing? I light it, and I see that this mod pack actually has immersive portals, which is pretty cool. Uh, kind of a weird time to point this out since uh, we're sort of in the middle of something else, but uh, well, I guess one block doesn't like my upside down tea, because now the texture packets laugh so hard that they've broken. Seriously, I, I think I'm gonna have to like rush this playthrough and get this all finished. I don't know how much more this mod pack can take. I guess the upside down tea was just too much to handle. Uh, on day 94, I had kind of thought I maybe had figured this out, and I do want to say, like, le legit, all jokes aside, I'm really sorry about this. I'm really sorry that this looks so bad, especially since my videos are actually starting to get better quality now. I, I didn't realize it was this bad, like, this late into the recording. Also, like, what a weird side note here, it is kind of funny that I'm saying sorry for the broken textures, and yet I'm totally ignoring this giant upside down T in my build like oh yeah that's not problematic at all right okay one last uh speed run all around the base just so you can see what we've all built in the last 100 days all jokes aside it actually does come out pretty good this is a really fun playthrough remember this all started from just one little grass block and now it's kind of its own mini little world gotta say i'm pretty happy with this one block is really cool because everything in it is all completely you nothing spawned in here nothing was like procedural every single thing here is all my design I'm gonna get my last sword ready, and of course, it is 37 levels? I mean, I guess that's still cheaper than gas nowadays. On day 96, we finally get to the end game. We get this great sword. Yeah, that'll do. Oh, and also, this happens, yeah. Got a little mini heart attack here. The first time doing this playthrough on day 96, I thought I could die here. I had no idea what was going on. In reality, though, it's no big deal. It just signals the reveal of the ender portal. So we make this super top tier staircase. I know, all impressed. I'll put a tutorial out for this later, don't worry. And then I just count to see how many eyes of Ender are actually missing here. Only four, which is no biggie, we can totally do that. And I actually wanna see what comes next. So I do hit the one block a little bit, and it's basalt, then quartz, then grass. And so at this point, uh, I think it's all just kind of random. And yeah, for everybody who's wondering, after you actually get through the end phase, you just go into like the end game phase the block just randomly generates any block from all the past phases. So I make all of my last preparations for the Ender Dragon fight. Potatoes, stone, to climb up the towers, water buckets, you guys get it. I say goodbye to all my pets. You guys are stinky, and you all need baths. And you know what? As a stinky boy myself, I respect that. And I'm gonna miss you guys. Mate, good boy, bad name. And as for you birds, you guys scared me every single day making creeper noises behind my back. But you know what? Still gonna miss you guys too. And with that, we finally set our last Eye of Ender in place, and we get ready to end the game. And while it is pretty cool that the portal has this view of like the whole arena from up in the air, I uh, I was kind of thinking, I'm, am I gonna have to just like MLG bucket? Like, what's the what's going on here? Luckily, I was wrong, because it lets you float down, so that's pretty good. Do use the water bucket though, just in case. And I start off popping some of the crystals. I gotta be honest with you guys, I haven't fought the Ender Dragon in like years. I can't even remember the last time I did this. I build up to one of the cages, I then break in 
and I spank this crystal really quick. Uh, but I have a ton of totems, so I'm kind of like, I still don't want to waste them, but I'm just sitting in the magic, but I'm getting a bit too greedy. And I jump, and yeah, I flub the MLG. Look, if you want to count that as like a death, and as me failing at this 100 day challenge, I'm not even going to fight you. I totally get it. That was me being dumb. At the same time, though, I came here to make a sick sky base, and that's what I did. Not to fight this dumb dragon. However, this time, I do decide to use my brain. So instead of just standing in the dragon's magic, I actually do break down and try to get away from that before I lose another totem. And then pop another crystal. And yeah, after that one, I think I've got them all. I'm gonna go do a quick test, shoot the dragon to see if she heals. If not, then I'll know I was right. And it turns out we were right. We did slap all the crystals. So now it's just time to put some holes in this girl's wings. I just shot her a hundred times from far away because my bow is pretty legit. But I do decide I want to get like a melee hit in once or twice because my sword's pretty good too. And uh, yeah, look, guys, if I'm going to be totally honest, I'm a YouTuber here. I'm trying to make an ent entertaining video. I want the last hit of this fight to be a melee one. I want to get that sick cinematic ending, you know what I mean? Like honestly, just shooting the dragon with a bow would be pretty lame. So, I want this fight to finish face to face. However, in the process, I'll admit, it made this fight just take way too long. But, I did it. Finally got that last stab in, and I didn't lose any more totems. GG. And now that the playthrough is totally done, I spend day 98 just making up a few signs. I put the names of all my Patreon members on them. Thank you guys so much, all of you who support me and all of you who support me on Patreon. I even added in Riley at the very end here who joined after the recording because I'm going to do everything I can to show you guys just how much I love you. This is me just throwing some sugar because you guys are my sugar daddies. And yeah, like... All jokes aside, thank you guys so much for supporting me. Thank you guys, I love you. And thank you for watching this video. Day 99, we're just gonna do a quick tour around the sky base, a little sped up here. And uh, yeah, thank you. I guys, you're amazing, I love you, and uh, see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye.